Uh, hi, so I don't really know much about this. So the purpose of the video is essentially going to be to try and figure out a little bit, I guess. Um, it's going to be based around puritism and hedonism. Um, so these things are essentially polar, polar opposites. So puritanism was um, a, a religious practice um, predominantly associated with Protestantism. I think it actually originated from the Protestants in um, the 16th and 17th century. And it's the idea that that we should have values of hard work and that we should try and avoid pleasure at all costs because pleasure is inherently wrong and bad. So we should practice a sort of asceticism, and which is essentially self-denial. And then you've got hedonism, which is that pleasure, with the, that our life should essentially be centred around pleasure because pleasure is good. And um, this is essentially what, and I'll keep saying essentially what I will, this is what um, Jeremy Bentham based his utilitarianism um, around the idea of pleasure being good and, and we should try and promote the most pleasure for the most people. So there's a big difference between these two ideas and these two ways of thinking. But what exactly... See, like, so, so one of the thoughts I've been having is, well, because bod bodily pleasure does matter. Sensual experience does matter in many ways because it is a part of our experience. We can't escape from our bodies, therefore, that and and the experiences that we have in within our body, um, like for example, listening to music or eating nice food or taking drugs or drinking alcohol, they all have an effect on our minds. Um, so so our body and minds are definitely um connected to one another in 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 many different ways. And um, I think some of the bodily pleasures that we can um, attain are actually um, positive for, for our well-being, for our mental well-being, as well as our physical well-being, if, if you can draw a distinction between those two things. So when you listen to music, it makes you feel good. Um, and, and that is a bodily pleasure. But with, Puritan, with Puritanism, um, would you not have to say that listening to music is actually bad because you're doing it to feel good? Because listening to music is is pleasurable, so you you shouldn't do things which cause you to feel pleasure because that's wrong and it's bad, and you should just focus on um doing things which you should just focus on um completing work and 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 doing more practical things in order to get far in life. But maybe it's like you you almost need to find the golden mean, so it's like you you can have too much pleasure. And you can be too hedonistic and you can not actually get anywhere in life. You can just completely live in the moment, never try and look forward to the future and, and actually try and create a life for yourself. You can't do that if you're just completely focused on pleasure. But then again, you can say, well, can you really create a life for yourself if all you ever do is work? If all you ever do is focus on um, avoiding pleasure and just uh, just doing things which which are going to maybe make you a lot of money um like could would you would you actually have the ability to do those things or would you need some downtime whereby you actually just indulge yourself in in certain bodily activities such as maybe drinking alcohol or listening to music or doing these sorts of things um to almost keep you grounded in in, in the world and keep you and maintain some sort of balance so i think that hedonists such as jeremy bentham perhaps realized this flaw with with them, this Protestant value of um, Puritanism, and they almost tried to take it to the logical extreme in 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 the polar opposite sense. So it's like, well, you can focus on hard work, but then we're gonna say no. Let's just ditch that. Let's just put all that aside and say, well, maybe we should only be focusing on pleasure. And obviously, there is a lot of issues with um this sort of Benthamite utilitarian type thinking, um because well. Because well, what what if you're a sadist and you get pleasure from causing harm, causing harm to other people? Then obviously you can't say that pleasure is inherently good or always good because it's not. Because um, it, it's it's well, it's hard to justify something as being good that causes harm to another person. Um, so so I think I think that's a big flaw with hedonism and and utilitarianism in general, I guess. Um, but. 
I think I don't think we should necessarily be too overly critical on on the whole um, benthamite uses her in theory, because I can almost see why it came about. Um, so with the Puritan values, it, it like I was saying, it it's it's all about hard work and self denial and and just trying to get things done, I guess. But but you do need to find that middle point whereby you you're not you're not completely denying yourself of bodily pleasures because our body is a part of ourselves and, and we do have meaningful experiences within our bodies. So we shouldn't completely deny deny bodily pleasure, but then again, we shouldn't also overindulge in it. So perhaps Protestants realised that, that it is um, this hedonistic type attitude which is which stops us getting places in life. So it's like, well, <laughs> that's bad. Um, that This lifestyle has the potential to spiral out of control into into um a completely meaningless life whereby we don't get anything done whatsoever so they've almost like completely um completely ignored it tried to shut it down um and then you've got hedonism which which i guess is a a later sort of philosophy or at least it manifested a little bit later in the utilitarian um sense and 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 they say well actually Puritanism is wrong because we have a body and we're able to feel pleasure and pleasure feels good. Therefore, we should pursue what is pleasurable for us. And I think to to an extent, um, they're also correct, but neither of them are independently completely correct because I, I, I don't quite know how to put this, but I think I think golden mean fits. So it's like you need to find that middle point whereby you manage to integrate your um your bodily pleasures you manage to integrate them i guess healthily but and 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 not allow it to spiral out of control so for example alcohol is okay every now and then um listening to music is okay every now and then watching films is okay every now and then but to completely focus your life around doing these sorts of things it, it, it's you're not really going to get anywhere in any other area of life so you also need to have the puritan idea of when you need to get something do, done you have to do it you have to, even if you don't want to even if it's not going to make you feel good if that's what you ought to do then you've got to do it um so it's you've got to find that golden mean you've got to be able to work hard but you've also got to um allow yourself downtime in order to feel pleasure and i think i don't know like i think well, you we've got Mel who who um developed Bentham's uh, theory of youth theory of utilitarianism because um Bentham he he didn't seem to put any sort of regulations around uh, what constituted pleasure at all. He just said what what is pleasurable is good, and and that's that essentially. Um, but Mill realized that we almost we need some sort of principle in place in order to um maintain some sort some form of morality when uh using pleasure as a um moral compass so so that's when he introduced the harm principle so it's not a complete antinomialism like um like bentham whereby there's it's no government control whatsoever i don't i don't know whether he actually said no government control but when when you use pleasure as a as a as a moral underpinning um, then you're essentially saying that anyone can do what they want if it makes them feel good. Um, so, sorry, you can sort of derive that idea from from his um, initial presupposition, which is pleasure is good. Um, but then Mill, Mill distinguishes between um, types of pleasures. So you've got pleasures of the mind, um, which I guess could be happiness, and then you've got um, pleasures of the body which is like indulging yourself in in like food or alcohol or or all of these different things and i feel like maybe mill has um has maybe not consciously but unconsciously attempted to um integrate um maybe puritanism with hedonism in a way because he, he does focus on um the the long term he he says that we should aim for long term happiness rather than just short term pleasure, because it's actually going to get us somewhere. 
Um, so so the, the higher pleasures of the mind that we talk about would be listening to music, um, reading books, reading poetry, which is actually what, well, poet, because um, Mel ended up having a, a mental breakdown due, due to his father being so strict on him. And he actually got out of that by reading poetry. So he, he realised that there are certain, certain, I don't know whether you call them hedonistic hes pleasures, because um, hed hedonism is essentially bodily pleasures, but is, is a pleasure of the mind a bodily pleasure? But if you say that the mind is, is not actually distinct from the body, then perhaps you could say that, yes, it is a bodily pleasure. It's just a different sort of pleasure, which is actually going to um, allow you to progress in life on, a, on an emotional level or allow you to maintain some sort of emotional stability so that you're able to um, carry on progressing in life um, on a let's say an, on a on a career level um yeah and, and you're able to maintain a, a sort of productivity um so yeah i feel like mill was right in that sense um i don't really know what else to talk about Okay, so I'll just do a little recap and then and that'll be it. So, Puritanism is the Protestant idea, is the 16th and 17th century Protestant idea that we should focus on hard work and asceticism, so self-denial of of pleasures. Um, and then we've got the polar opposite of that, which is essentially hedonism. Um, so hedonism is, is the idea that pleasure is good um, and that we should revolve our our lives around what makes us feel good um and then you go forward a little bit um and we almost try to integrate the two together because they're both part of our experience um and and i guess i guess it's about finding that balance and i feel like mill maybe gets there in some senses um in some sense so yeah and that's it so this is a slightly more philosophical video, so I haven't made a video for about a week, so I thought, and I, I've just been thinking about this, it just kept on popping up on my mind, so I figured I would make a video about it, and I actually think it came up in my mind, because I was, um, I was listening to uh, Gilbert Ryle, maybe less than a week ago, uh, talk about some things in a pretty cool video, I can't even remember what he was talking about, but it, it was quite good, um, but yeah, so thank you for watching.